Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number two from the 2025 Calc BC exam. Uh, it is a polar question for the first time in ages. Let's take a look. Um, the curve C is defined by the polar equation, um, R of theta equals two sine squared of theta between zero and pi. Curve C and the semicircle R equals one half between zero and pi are shown in the XY plane. Part A, find the rate of change of R with respect to theta at the point on the curve C where theta equals 1.3, show the setup for your calculations. I don't know, this one seems pretty straightforward. So uh, we're looking for drd theta. So drd theta, this is a calculator problem. So we're just gonna plug in 1.3. So calculator, I defined r of t. I usually use t instead of theta because it's just easier. Then I found the derivative at 1.3. So I'm gonna write down 1.031 and uh, I'm pretty sure that's what they're asking for. So uh, the next part. Find the area of the region that lies inside the curve C, but outside the graph of the polar equation R equals one half. We need to show the setup for our calculation. Um, so we're gonna need to know when these two things intersect, which means we need to figure out um, on this region, where does R of theta equal to one half? So this is a calculator problem. So let's allow the calculator to do it. So I got pi over six and five pi over six by using solve and I um, limited the domain to make sure that it would only solve on that interval. You could also do this by graphing for sure. Um, however your calculator handles it, however you're used to it is the way to go. You can see I also just did the integral while I was there. Um, I defined R2 of T. I don't know why, I could have just used one half all the time. Um, so now we need to write down our integral. So polar integrals for area is always one half then it's the integral from where you're starting to where you're stopping, so pi over six to five pi over six. And then it's going to be um, the outer curve, the curve that is farthest, which in this case is r of theta. So it's gonna be r of theta squared, and then minus the inner curve, the one that's closer to the origin, which in this case is just one half squared. Um, and then we get d theta. You can see I got 2.067, uh, three decimal places. So I'm gonna go with that. Then like, just to kind of like check what I think the answer is, like if you kind of just draw a rectangle, like from, I don't know, like y equals 0.5 to y equals two, that's like 1.5. And then the thing is kind of like 1.5 across. So that would give me like 2.25, but it's a little less than that. So this feels like it's definitely the answer. Um, you can always kind of check using like circles and squares and rectangles, you can check to get a feel for how accurate your answer is. I recommend that. Um, let's take a look at the next part. It can be shown that dx d theta is four sine of theta, cosine squared of theta minus two sine cubed of theta. Uh, okay, so that's where x is equal to r times cosine of theta if you're not sure where that's coming from. And then you take the derivative, it's kind of messy. Between zero and pi over two, we wanna find the value of theta that corresponds to the point on the curve c that is farthest from the y-axis. So zero to pi over two is the first quadrant. So you can kind of like eyeball this. It's that point right there. That point is the farthest. So uh, we're looking for where x just has an absolute maximum between zero and pi over two. So uh, you, this, this could be the candidates test or this could be lonely critical point theorem. Uh, let's see what happens. So for starters, we need to know when dx d theta is equal to zero. So we're looking for critical points, calculator, I graphed dx d theta and I got um, 0.955, I guess. Um, so we'll say theta is approximately 0.955. Now we can see in our graph here that dx d theta is going from positive to negative there. We're just gonna write up the relative maximum justification there because uh, our dx d theta is going from uh, positive to negative, so we have a relative maximum. So I'm gonna write that dx d theta changed positive to negative at this theta, x has a relative maximum there. Now we're also gonna say there's only one critical point and it's a relative maximum. Therefore, it must be the absolute maximum. Um, and then because I don't really know that I've answered this question, although I'm pretty sure I have, I'm gonna also write another sentence. So here we go. So I'm gonna say since uh, theta equals 0.955 is uh, the only critical point on the interval from zero to uh, pi over two, we know that X has its absolute maximum at theta equals 0.955. Um, and then that I think answers the question, but again, I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to write down when X is an absolute maximum, the point is farthest from the Y axis to really hammer home why I was doing what I was doing. Um, so I think that's a complete answer to this question. Sometimes with these sorts of questions, uh, you know, you, you 
you know how to do the math. It's, it's the making sure the reader knows that you know how to do the math that's the tricky part. But I think that covers it. Let's take a look at uh, the next part. Particle travels along curve C so that d theta dt is 15 for all times t. Find the rate at which the particle's distance from the origin changes with respect to time when the particle is at the point where theta is 1.3 and we need to show setup. So if you think about it, the thing that this is really talking about, because it's distance, particle's distance from the origin with respect to time. The distance to the origin is r, so they're looking for dr dt here, but dr, uh, r rather, is a function of theta. So we have to use the chain rule on this. This is, it's kind of related rates. I think of it as chain rule these days. Um, so I'm going to say it's, uh, because of this, it's dr d theta. And then we need to end up with dr dt. So we must have to multiply by this d theta dt that they gave us. Now they told us d theta dt is always 15. So we can actually say dr dt is just dr d theta times 15. Um, and now this is a calculator problem. So I just had the calculator kind of uh, knock it out for us. We need to plug in point, uh, 1.3. Uh, so here's what I got. So I'm going to say it's 15.465. Uh, and I think that's the entirety of the question. So Polar's back. I don't know. We'll be back again next year. We'll see. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.